Chapter 10, Estimating and Hypothesis Testing. In this video, we'll learn how to conduct hypothesis tests using sample data for the difference between two population proportions. Again, with hypothesis testing, we are typically looking at two-tailed tests, one-tailed lower tail tests, or one-tailed upper tail tests. And here, it's going to look very similar to what we learned about hypothesis testing for two population means, it's just now we're doing proportions. So wherever you saw the mu for the mean, we have now replaced it with little p for proportion. So again, as a refresher, here in our hypothesis statements, it's saying that the difference between our two population proportions are equal to zero or not equal to zero. Or in our second version, is that our population proportion of group one is equal to our population proportion of group two or they're not equal to each other. In that case, we have a two-tailed test. We have two rejection regions possible. With our one-tailed lower-tailed test, we are again comparing if, if the difference of our two population proportions are less than zero, that means my first population proportion is smaller than my second population proportion, which is also stated here in our second version of our hypotheses where the alternative hypothesis states that our first population proportion is less than or smaller than our second population proportion. And again, our less than points to the left or the lower tail side, and we will reject the null. Here for our one-tailed upper tail test, if I take the difference of my two population proportions and it's an upper tail, it's going to be greater than zero or a positive number. Similarly, the second version which I prefer because it's more direct, it says that in my alternative hypothesis, our first population proportion is greater than our second population proportion. Again, the greater than symbol points to the right, tells me I'm in an upper tail test, and if my population proportion one is significantly greater than my population proportion two, I'll be in the rejection region out here. As you can see in the visuals here, we're working with z-values. So just like in chapter 9, uh, when we're working with population proportions, we are only working with z-values. We do not have to worry about t-values at all. So with population proportions, we have to calculate the pooled estimator for our overall proportion, where we'll take our sample size of our first sample times the proportion of that sample plus the sample size of our second sample times the proportion of the second sample, and we divide that by our sample size one plus sample size two. So make sure to plug in your n's and p's in the correct place. Here is our z test statistic for the difference between our population proportions. So here we've got our sample proportions subtracted from each other, plugged in here. Note that our population proportions here, this is our hypothesized difference. And in this chapter, our hypothesized difference is zero, right? We just want to know whether or not there's a difference. And then here in the bottom, this is our standard error again, where this pooled estimator we calculated up here will get plugged in to this uh, bottom half of the formula. So notice that there are several P's that you're working with and you want to make sure you use the correct one. So this is my sample proportion of my first sample. This is the sample proportion of my second sample. These are my hypothesized proportions. In this case, it's just going to be zero. And here's my pooled estimator for the overall proportion. So this p-bar, note there's no number under it. That's because you found it using this formula up here. So let's just look at problem 58. This is a problem in our textbook and also on your homework. Suppose a random sample of 100 US companies taken in 2015 showed that 21 of them offered high deductible health insurance plans to their workers. A separate random sample of 120 firms taken in 2016 showed that 30 offered high deductible health insurance plans to their workers. Based on the sample results, can you conclude that there is a higher proportion of US companies offering high deductible health insurance plans to their workers in 2016 than in 2015? Conduct your hypothesis test at a level of significance of alpha is 0 
note we can't just compare our two sample proportions and says, well, one's bigger than the other. We have to account for sampling error, and that's why we have to use the test statistics and the formulas that I just showed you on the previous screen. So first, let's set up our hypothesis test. Based on the context clues in here, what the question asks for is that is there a higher proportion of companies offering these types of insurance plans to their workers in 2016 versus 2015? So sometimes it's easier to write out a little bit of a descriptor. Here with my, hypo uh, my alternative hypothesis, it's saying is the proportion in 2016 greater than the proportion in 2015? So with this, our alpha is 0 0.05, and based on our alternative hypothesis, this greater than tells us that this is an upper tailed test. So first we have to find our sample proportions from our problem here. So the proportion of companies that offer this type of insurance plan uh, in 2016 was 120 firms in our sample and 30 offered it. So we'll take 30 divide by 120, and our sample proportion in 2016 was 0.25. To get the sample proportion of 2015, I go back to my story. We see that 21 companies offered this type of insurance plan out of the 100 companies sampled. So we we'll take our 21 divided by 100. That gives us a sample proportion of 0.21. Now, to get our pooled estimator for the overall proportion, I need to carefully plug in all my N's and P's in the right place. My N in my 2016 was 120, and my proportion that we found, since I don't know the population proportion, I'm going to use my sample proportion because that's the best estimate I have. So I'm going to use this 0.25 we solved here and plug that in for P sub 1. Then we'll add our sample size uh, in 2015, that was the 100 companies, and we will multiply that by our proportion in 2015, the 0.21 here that we found. And then our denominator, that's where we will add our sample size from 2016 and our sample size in 2015. So that's the 120 plus 100. And when I solve for that across the way, that gives me 51 in my numerator and 220 in my denominator. And so our pooled estimator for the overall proportion is 0.2318. So now we have several numbers that we're going to end up plugging into our test statistic. We have our sample proportion for our first group, our 2016 companies, our sample proportion of our second group, which is our 2015 data, and our pooled estimator for the overall proportion of both groups combined at 0.2318. So our decision rule states that we will reject the null if the calculated value of our test statistic z is blank than the critical value. Again, we're doing an upper tail test. Our alternative hypothesis gave us the greater than symbol. So this is going to be greater than the critical value. And here we're going to use Appendix F or Excel to find our critical value. Uh, and that will be 1.645. Otherwise, we would not reject the null. Now, here's our calculated value of the z-test statistic, and now we have to carefully plug in all of our information into the right place. So plugging in our sample proportion for 2016, our first group, minus our sample proportion of our 2015 companies, our second group, minus our hypothesized difference. We're testing if there's no difference between our two population proportions, so we put zero our pooled estimator that we calculated previously, the 0.2318, goes into the denominator. So we're going to take our pooled estimator of 0.2318 times 1 minus our 0.2318. And then we'll multiply that by 1 over our sample sizes added together. So that's 1 over 100 plus 1 over 120. Then we'll square root the whole thing. So simplifying across, when I subtract 0.25 minus 0.21 minus 0, I get 0.04. And when I use my calculator and I plug in all of these numbers correctly and carefully, handling my parentheses first and the components, I can't just add across. I have to be careful with my fractions. Then I multiply it by my numbers here, and then I square root the whole thing. I get 0.0571. So our z-test statistic 
is 0.701. Now, part C is just like we've been doing with our critical value method, is that we will compare what we got in part B to what our decision rule is in part A. So, because our z-test statistic of 0.701 is less than our critical value of 1.645, we do not reject the null because we're not in the rejection region. I'm not greater than my critical value, I'm less than. So we can conclude that there is not a higher proportion of U.S. companies offering high deductible health insurance plans to its workers in 2016 than in 2015. If you have any questions, just let me know.